Thoughts, welcome to the Film Focus page, it's me Mr P again, I'm going to be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp, the sequel to the Smash Hit 2015 film, starring Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly and Michael Douglas. Now in this film, we see in the early years, Michael Douglas and his wife, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, attempt to thwart a national disaster. And we learn how he lost his wife, where she goes into the quantum realm and subsequently dies. And then a few years later, Michael Douglas's character, Hank, discovers that, well, if Ant-Man, played by Paul Rudd, can actually go into the quantum realm and come back alive, then maybe they can retrieve his wife from the quantum realm. And so on begins a mission of where they begin a mission, they build a machine to try and retrieve his wife from the quantum realm. But not they don't discover is that there's another character in the film called Ghost, played by Hannah John Kamen, who has got the ability to move through walls as a result of an experiment that Hank conducted a few years earlier. And she too wants the machine to be built to basically help save her life and basically stop her from dematerializing. Now, what I loved about this film, and let's start about what I loved, was the fact that this film is a major piece in the, of the puzzle in the MCU universe. In terms of, it teaches us, okay, why was Ant-Man absent? from Avengers Infinity Wars. We learn about that. We also learn about where this film fits in the next um, Marvel film with the post credit sequence. And this film, as enjoyable as it was, I didn't find it as enjoyable as the first film. You know, what I liked was A, Paul Rudd's character and his performance in this film. Paul Rudd was very, very charismatic in this film. As a writer of this film also, he brought a lot of comedy to the role, he brought a lot of drama to the role, and the comedic moments in this film are spot on. His interaction with Evangeline Lilly, who plays Wasp in the character, I thought was great. And I liked how she got a more substantive role in this film, playing the Wasp. I thought the action sequences in this film were really on point as well. And I saw this film on 4DX. So to see this film with 3D glasses and to have experienced the 4D experience was really, really great. And I like the action sequences in this film also, which were held by Peyton Reed. The fight sequences, the car chase in San Francisco, the streets of San Francisco, which was a nod to a TV show that Michael Douglas did years earlier, I thought was a great touch. Also, the new additions to the film. Hannah John Kamen as Ghost, I thought she was great. You know, she was very vulnerable, she was very menacing. And the physicality of the role as well, in terms of her fights with Wasp and Ant-Man, I thought she was very, very good. Lawrence Fishburne, you can't fault him. He lends great support wherever he goes, and he was really, really good in this role. Also, other supporting characters, Michael Peña, T.I. Tip Lewis, who played, you know, the associates of um, Paul Rudd's character in the um, Ant-Man film, I thought they were great. They weren't as funny as they were in the first film, but, you know, they lend really, really strong support. But for me, the star of this film was Randall Park, who played Jimmy Woo, who was an FBI agent and also the parole officer of um, Paul Rudd's character. And I found him to be hilarious. You know, he's done a lot of comedy work in the past. He was on MTV's um, Wild and Out with Nick Cannon. He's done a lot. And his comedic delivery, the banter between him and Paul Rudd's character, and just basically his comedic one-liners in this film were just spot on. And for me, I thought he was the star of the show. But saying that, great action sequences, great um, visual effects, great comedic one-liners. This was an enjoyable watch. But the bad points about this film was that this film is close to two hours, just a little bit over two hours long. And you do feel that during the third act that the film begins to lag. And it wasn't as consistent as the first film. Even the finale in this film wasn't as enjoyable or as funny as the first film. But with that being said, there's still a lot for hardcore Marvel fans to keep you entertained. And this film, as enjoyable as it was, it's not funnier than the first um, Ant-Man film. It certainly isn't the funniest um, film within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, I think it's, I think it's still a match between Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor Ragnarok and Spider-Man Homecoming. Those films... Hilarious. But this film is a worthy installment of the franchise and it works based on the charismatic performances from Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly, who make a great combination in this film. And the post-credit sequence in this film, as always for all die-hard Marvel fans, 
you know you need to wait when the post credit sequence comes because it's going to be basically give an indicator of what happens next. This film gives us a really, really good indicator about what we should expect from the next Marvel film, which should be Captain Marvel, which comes out in 2019 and which I will be reviewing. But on the whole, a very solid follow up to the first film. I enjoyed it. I think it'll be great for anybody who watches it. Great entertainment for the family, good one liners, great comedic moments and some good action sequences and visual effects. So with that being said, I will give Ant-Man a good 8 out of 10. This is one to watch. This is one in the DVD collection also. So that's my review of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, leave your comments here. Let me know what your favourite Marvel film is and I shall see you on the next film review. Take care.